This is Dr. Carroll, and this is another video about the background for single source shortest paths. And so let's jump right in. Let's talk about the definition uh, that we need for a background. We're going to start with a graph with a set of vertices V and a set of edges E, which is weighted and directed. And we also have a weight function W where we have E is the set of edges and R is the set of real numbers. We also have a, um, W of P which is the weight of a path P meaning it's the sum of all the weights of all of the edges along that path. We also have lowercase delta of u comma v and this is the minimum of the weight function for a path p and that's meaning a path from u to v but if there isn't a path then it is infinity if there's no path between u and v also let's be clear that a graph can have multiple shortest paths from vertex u to v but that means that they would all have the same weight all right, let's talk about some examples. We could find this in driving directions. For example, uh, you could imagine various things being vertices, intersections, or destinations, and then edges between them. You could look at be, um, breaking the world record for a Rubik's Cube. It is very fast, by the way, um, the, the world record. And so we could, for example, represent states as vertices and then the turns or moves as edges and then look at what's the shortest distance. Another application could be Erdos number. This is kind of interesting. It's the number of connections. That's the people that you've published with, also referred to as collaboration number, to get to the mathematician Paul Erdos. You might be interested to know that for, for me, my Erdos number is four. Another um, example may be a PERT chart analysis. So here are some examples of PERT charts. As you can see, they lend themselves very well to having vertices and edges and, and weights to get between them and then to and analyze that. All right, now let's talk about some related algorithms or variants um, to give some context and also to a deeper appreciation. First, we could have it reversed. We could have single destination with multiple starting points. Uh, another one would be single pair shortest path and then all pair shortest path. So let's go to the reversed one, the first one, the single destination, multiple starting points. And so this could be accomplished by reversing the directions of all the edges. For example, let's think about a shipping logistics where the customer's order is available from multiple warehouses and we want to choose which one has the, sh the lowest cost to get to a certain point. For single sh pair shortest pass, what's interesting is if we're just looking at one pair, all known algorithms have the same runtime as single source shortest paths. I think that's very interesting. We get uh, know about all of the shortest distances for the same cost as a single pair. An another variant is all pairs shortest paths. And so this is for all pairs of edges uh, U and V. And um, that's, that's for another video or an another chapter. Uh, I will say that typically we use floyd warshall algorithm, which is a dynamic programming algorithm. Now let's talk about some challenging attributes, one of which is negative weight edges, negative weight cycles, and, um, and then we'll talk about cycles in a little bit. So negative weight edges are paths with negative weights. 
but no cycles to be clear. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And these are actually well defined. And so if we happen to have a negative weight edge, that's fine, we'll just take it in stride. Now let's talk about negative weight cycles. So these are paths with negative that have negative weight cycles. And they are not well defined. Why is that? It's because we can always find a lower cost path by including the cycle another time. It's if we have a, a loop, a, a cycle that has a negative weight, then we can reduce the overall weight, the overall um, weight of, of the path, the cost of the path, by just including the cycle another time. And so here we have delta of uv is going to equal negative infinity if the path from u to v includes a negative weight cycle. That's going to be challenging um, to take that into account, and not all algorithms uh, handle that. Let's talk about cycles. So we've already talked about negative weight cycles and that we, we can't have them, but let's talk about positive weight cycles. We can just remove the cycle, and by doing that, by definition of a cycle in the path, we can then reduce the path cost. So shortest paths do not contain cycles. Uh, in terms of terminology, they are simple paths. Now let's talk about three algorithms to calculate single source shortest paths, or at least the, the background to them. We have Bellman Ford, we have single source shortest paths in DAGs or directed acyclic graphs, and then we have Dijkstra's. What's interesting is all three of these share the same initialization and relaxation step. Let's first talk about initialization. For initialization, what we need to do is set things up so that we can um, iterate over the algorithm. So what we do is for, for each vertex V that is in the set of the vertices V, then we do two things. We, we keep track of the current best estimate, our current distance to that vertex from the source S and so we're going to initialize it to infinity. Uh, initially, there is no path, and so we use infinity to represent no path. The other thing we want to keep track of is the, the predecessor vertex. How did we get to that vertex? What was the path we took so that we can figure out what the path is? Usually, we don't want to just know the cost. We also want to know the path and the cost. And then we also need to have a starting uh, vertex S and that's our source vertex, and the distance to it is zero, we're already there. Now let's talk about relaxation. What this is, is it's a test to see if there's a shorter path from V through U. And if there is, then we're going to update the estimate to V if such a path exists. So we, we need to know about the vertex U, the vertex V, and we also need to have our weight function W. So if there is, if the, the current distance to, to V, that is U dot D, is larger than the, dis, the sum of the distance to U plus the, the edge from U to V, then the, the current best estimate that we have for V is more than the distance. And so we can relax that constraint. And so we found a shorter path to V through U more than what we um, knew before. And we need to update the distance and predecessor um, to, to reflect this. So we update the distance to V uh, by using basically the same approach. What was the distance to U plus the weight of the edge? And then we update the predecessor to be U. So what's interesting in these three algorithms is that relaxation is the only way distance estimates are updated. So now I'd invite you to look into these three algorithms, Bellman Ford, single source, shortest paths and DAGs, and Dijkstra's, and um, think about them. How do they work? What types of graphs will they work on? And what is the runtime of the algorithm? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that.